I've been following the Croatian wine scene for some time. I knew nothing about it when I first came here. And every time I went to a wine festival, I would always come across this huge stand from this winery called Ilochki Podrum. And then I had no idea where this town Ilochki was. And finally I went up to ask them and they told me it was a town called Ilok, which is the easternmost town in Croatia. Nobody really goes there because it really is the end of the world in terms of perception here in Croatia. But they make the most amazing wines. And the first thing that really, really struck me about this winery in what I heard was that in 1953, at the Queen Elizabeth's coronation, the winery had Ilochki Podrum Traminac 1947 vintage. And there were 11,000 bottles ordered for the coronation. So here was a winery in the middle of nowhere that was serving wine to the British royal family for the most prestigious of occasions. I then found out that when Prince William got married, they also served the same Treminuts. And when Prince Harry got married, the same thing. So here is a winery which had a lot of tradition. And so eventually I went to visit and I heard probably the most incredible wine story of the many incredible wine stories I've heard about Croatia in definitely one of the most picturesque atmospheric wineries. So when the war started in 1991, Ilok was very, very hard to defend because it was surrounded by three sides by Serbs, and so very, very quickly they took it over. The Ilochki Podrum winery is a very historic place. It dates back, I think, 300 years or so. It's a beautiful, beautiful estate. The Serbs came in and they had these huge barrels. They were like uh, 60,000 liters and things like that. And the Serbs turned all the wine or most of the wine into rakia and they let the, uh, the barrels dry out, and so the barrels were then useless. But there was one very, very dedicated employee at Ilochki Podrum. He decided that he wanted to try and save some of the best wines. There was this cellar with all the wines, and it had lots of mold, and it was damp, and it was perfect conditions for, for storing wine. He managed to build a fake wall and cover it with all the mold and everything else to make it look as though it was an original wall. And behind that wall, he saved 8,000 of the best vintage vintages of Ilochki Podrum and the Serbs didn't notice. And so when the war finished, he took his bosses down there and said, this is what I've managed to save. And included in that were I think 1200 bottles of the 1947 vintage of the uh, Tremlinats. In uh, 2019, the first time I went, uh, they took me down there. They showed me the wines and there were 182 bottles left of the 1947. They were selling it for 55,000 kuna a bottle. So it was probably the most expensive Croatian wine in history. It's great to have a, a price for 55,000 kuna, but who's gonna pay that price? And he said, oh, you know, last week we had a Russian guy, paid the cash, put the, put the wine in the fridge, and then an hour later came and drank the whole bottle in, uh, in, in one sitting. So it does happen. And then they have the most amazing vineyards too, and they have this restored state house called the Principovats, which is on the top of a hill. It has a three-hole golf course as well. And if you stay at Principovats, you have the most amazing views of all the, uh, all the valleys and all the vineyards and excellent food. It's a great wedding location. People think Ilok is in the middle of nowhere. It's actually closer to Zagreb than Split. It'll take you three hours to get there and not that many people go, but uh, they've been making wine there since Roman times and it's a phenomenal place. God save our gracious queen. Long live our noble queen, long live the queen, let's drink.